Hi guys, Demagonia with Convicted Heart. It's been a minute, so I'm trying to catch up because life has sucked lately. <laughs> I'm just going to be honest. Um, so I apologize. I haven't really put any videos out. I've been a little MIA. But yeah, um, life isn't going so great right now. I know I normally try to keep it positive. I really want to. It makes me feel good, actually. You know, it's one of the things that I like to do is encourage others. But I'm just going to be really honest and open right now. Um, I have a hard time encouraging myself. I do better, I think, with... Not that I'm wonderful or whatever. I'm just saying I do better. I feel better about myself, about life, when I'm encouraging others. So I really enjoy that. So just know that. And I appreciate you guys allowing me into your lives to do that. But I'm struggling right now. And I'm having a hard time... Um, staying encouraged because of like life events um, just the way things are right now things that I can't change at the moment or things that I need to decide if I am going to change so I just figured I would have like a little ranty car chat with you I was filming while I was driving I actually just pulled up to the mall which I hate by the way I hate shopping. I'm not like your typical, I guess it would be typical female. Most females that I know anyways love to shop. I don't. I don't like crowds. I don't like being around other people like in large, I don't know, spaces. I have anxiety. So I'm not looking forward to this. As a matter of fact, I came to the mall the other day and I actually had a full-blown panic attack when I was inside. It felt pretty stupid, but um, that's life, right? With anxiety. So I, I left, I, I left and I thought, let me get something to eat because I was hungry. And then I made the stupid decision of getting in line at Chick-fil-A by the Northridge mall. And oh my gosh, that was a wrong, wrong decision. The line is awful and I felt like trapped. So I was having even more of a panic attack because I got in this line that I couldn't get out of and it was super long and it was taking forever and I knew my family was going to be pissed off and basically I just feel like I can't please anybody or do anything right right now. And that feeling sucks because it's like nobody sees the good things that you try to do when you're a people pleaser type of person. Like they're so used to, when I say they're, I am referring to my family or a person in my family, but I'm gonna say they just to keep myself from getting into, I don't know, an issue <laughs> at home. I'm sure you guys understand, but you know, we all have one person or some people in our family that expect so so much from us that it becomes like so overwhelming it's suffocating and it's my own fault you know it's my own fault to a certain degree because I have created that type of environment I have made it that way where I was waiting on everybody hand and foot basically serving people literally on a platter um making every single meal like I enjoy that I do enjoy cooking I'm not complaining about that but when things start going a different way in life and I had to step up um I don't know step up my my game as far as being a little extra with being a mom you know my kids my older girls lost their dad in April so I've had to do not that I'm I see I'm like criticizing myself and trying to explain at the same time it sucks being in my mind right now I'm trying to step up and be there for them in more of a way than I had to be before because they had another parent before I want to be there for them in every which way I can now, that means other people in my family unit have to share me a little more and have a little less of my time and attention. And now they are feeling some kind of way and throwing a fit and having a tantrum. And it just makes me feel like I can't do anything right. 
and I hate that feeling because I already feel that way about myself. I struggle with feeling good enough <clears throat> in lots of areas of my life. And I hate when I'm reminded by someone like, you know, that wasn't enough or you used to do this or you used to do that or what took you so long? Why didn't you make this for dinner? And I thought you were going to... Meanwhile, the people that are bitching and complaining are sitting on their asses literally waiting for me to get home. Forgive my language. I normally try not to cuss, curse, whatever, but I'm just feeling kind of like I just don't care right now. And I'm sharing that with you guys, so I apologize. Um, I haven't really got any shopping done. I'm like barely <sighs> going to have time. And I'm looking at like hundreds of cars in this parking lot and I don't even want to go in. But if I don't do it, nobody's going to. So, I don't know. I was watching this video. I know this is kind of all over the place, so I apologize. But that's where I'm at right now. Also, I apologize for not being on the round table last night. My Wi-Fi was down. Literally, there was a car accident or something. Hit the pole that carried the fiber optic lines to my Wi-Fi company and had no Wi-Fi um, most of the night. So I couldn't log on with the laptop. So I was really disappointed about that too because that is like my time to kick it with you guys and um, with my brothers over there, Cholo Trucker, Sunny Boy from the Street St. Loyal, Paul from LA Times. So I was really bummed out. I, I missed that. Then <laughs> to make matters worse, like halfway's into waiting for my Wi-Fi to be reinstalled, uh, my mom called and she was, I could tell something was wrong and I was like, what's up? She's like, hey, you know, are you home? I'm not anywhere near home and, you know, my stepdad called her and was freaking out. Their dog was like screeching, screaming, barking out like in pain and my stepdad was having a complete like meltdown because he, you know, obviously he was alone. He doesn't know how to handle that. And, um, so I had to get over there and, um, my kids wanted to go with me. So I started to drive there and then was told, um, Christmas presents were everywhere. So not to bring the kids. So I had to turn around, go back home, take the kids back to be with their older sibling and parent. And then I felt like a jerk because the little one wanted to go. She was upset. Um, my older daughter went with me to help me out. Um, she knows how it gets uh, when my stepdad is upset and the dog was making like terrible noises. It was like traumatizing to even hear over the phone. So in reality, it's better the little one didn't go because it probably would have freaked her out. We get there, we get in the car with him, and their emergency vet is like 45 minutes away. It's raining. It was a nightmare. But I'm glad we could be there for him and comfort the little doggy. Um, his name is Shooter, so keep him in your prayers, you guys. We sat in the emergency vet parking lot for like four and a half hours waiting for an answer. They said they thought he probably had a stroke, and um, we're running some tests. Eventually, they ended up telling us they would keep him overnight, so we were able to come back home. So I had to come back to my parents' house to get my car, go back home, and basically be welcomed with everybody being pissed off at mom for not uh, doing everything that they feel like I needed to do or expected. So, yeah, I just feel like I can't do anything right right now. I feel like I am just failing everybody and I can't make anyone happy and it doesn't make me happy. I'm really, you know, I have been really enjoying like doing this YouTube journey with you guys and growing and I feel so grateful and it makes me feel really good to have something, you know, that's mine that I can do. It's not just um, involving a title like mom or daughter or you know whatever and then like recently I've had a family member or two tell me that basically what I'm doing and this is 
I'm just sharing this with you guys. No, I hope none of you take this like personal because it's not against you guys. It's against me. This attack was verbal attack. Like I'm not doing ish, and what I do is not important. And um, basically saying like, you know, basically trying to like clown me and say you don't even make any money. Like it's stupid. You know, why do you care so much? And I do care because I feel like this is my space with you guys to share my life, my experiences, to share each other's experiences and lives. So, you know, for someone to downplay that and make me feel or try their best to make me feel like um, not valued really sucks. And I feel stupid basically that I have allowed someone to have so much control over my my thoughts of myself and my position in life that it would make me for a minute doubt if I could continue doing this because of what they think about it when in reality I'm a grown ass woman and I'm starting to realize that I need to stop caring so much what other people think about me because that is a problem. I've been that way my whole life. I don't know why. I did used to be a lot more um, angry or aggressive about it. Like if somebody tried saying something slick, you know, I would react in um, a different way. You know, I'm a mom. I can't do that. Uh, that got me into issues in my youth that I don't want to go through as an adult, obviously. So it just, I started to kind of lose myself. Um, because, I, yeah, like I said, aggression was my, my first reaction before when it came to defending myself. Uh, but I need to just, I need to outsmart People like this that are trying to basically sabotage what I am trying to build and I think that's a good lesson for all of us not just me I'm sure that some of you are probably going through maybe something similar um, on different circumstances but you can relate I'm sure some of you I hope um, but no I'm not gonna let I'm not gonna let people's insults and belittling me basically um, kind of destroy what I started when I started doing this it's um, it was like a form of therapy and it still is like sharing my life sharing your lives you know looking into different things and I enjoy it why would I let someone take that away from me or make me feel so small and so undervalued that they basically, I don't know, it's just, I'm tired of being manipulated mentally and emotionally. It's, it sucks. And like I said, I feel like I just can't do anything right right now. I feel like everything's kind of falling apart. And I feel like I'm the only one trying to hold it together. And I, Feel like the walls are closing in. I need to get it together. I know, and I will. I'm just having a moment, and that's okay because we have moments, right? I'm just happen to be sharing it with all of you. <laughs> Maybe some people think that's weird or whatever, but I don't. I don't. I think it's normal, and I think. If more of us shared these moments with each other, it would probably, I don't know, allow us to feel like, okay, maybe I'm not just crazy and, um, I don't know, something's wrong with me. Maybe, like, this is normal to have these moments and to feel this way because other people feel this way and have these moments. So I'm just going to just gonna do that. I'm gonna have a moment with you guys and share what I'm going through. Um, something that came to across my like what is it, the timeline
online or whatever when I was looking at YouTube before my Wi-Fi went out yesterday was this doctor, um, I think she's like a psychiatrist or psychologist, and she was talking about being a people pleaser and the things that come along with that. And basically like everything she said, I feel like she was talking about me. <laughs> and I remember like back in the day, a therapist I was seeing did tell me that. She's like, you're a people pleaser. And that's why like you feel like nothing is good enough. And you're always trying to make everybody else happy like around you in your inner circle and you're suffering because of it and that is definitely how I feel right now like I feel like if I could just keep everyone else happy like I'll be okay everything will be okay and that's a lie that's a lie that I've told myself and I've lived for a long time and I think it started for sure when I was a kid and I was uh, very scared and afraid of my dad and his wrath. So my entire childhood was walking on eggshells as well as, you know, dealing with um, my mom who suffered from severe depression and uh, physical illness, chronic illness, which, you know, I... I might have touched on this in the past, but maybe not too deeply because I don't want to come across as like, oh, poor me, but I do deal with a chronic illness and um, it causes me to have severe phases of, um, well, chronic pain and different issues that make my life very difficult and uh, make it very difficult for me to do many different types of work so um just kind of share this i guess um 2000 i think it was 2011 was the last time i had a job outside of the home and i became very ill and my doctor took me off of work so i um i ended up getting a doctor that told me um you know i would qualify for like disability or something and I did see that through. It took many years because I kept being told you're too young to have all of these issues wrong with you. Although it's medically in your records, like there's no way it's going to be approved because of your age. And finally, like after years and years, <clears throat> and then after my father's murder and all the de details behind that, I finally got a hearing and went before a judge and um, it was a form of social security. And a federal judge told me, well, and, and the attorneys that were in the room, whatever, on record, that due to my physical ailments, my um, well, mental issues, I mean, you know, depression, anxiety, PTSD, the things that I had witnessed and saw as far as um, abuse and my father's murder, my stepfather shooting. Uh, I remember this judge, when he said it out loud, that's what it tripped me out. Like, I know my own life, but to hear someone else speak on your life when you're in front of them, it's almost like an out-of-body experience. It's a trip. But he said, um, mind you, this was a favorable um, decision for me, but to hear him say, like, Miss Magania will never be able to work again. She will never be able to rejoin the workforce with the issues she has and with the um, illness she has. She will never be okay to work again. And mind you, I, I was in a very bad situation at that time. I looked different. I felt different. I was messed up. So I was granted permanent disability and that's basically how I have survived or got by <clears throat> rather because it's not much you know at all <laughs> some of you know that I know I have a couple friends on here that know because they go through it too and then I'm sure some people look at me or look at some of you that 
might be on this building and think, oh, you look normal, you look fine, now oh, come on, you know. But, you know, if you did see our medical records and the things that we deal with on a normal basis, the things that we have to go through to look okay and be okay once a week on video or twice a week or whatever, you get it. But, I don't know. That's either here nor there. I can't really explain all of it. I'm just trying to give you guys a little insight into what I'm going through, what some of my life looks like, and why I'm feeling super overwhelmed. Uh, so the, I got sidetracked because I wanted to share that with you guys, but I've kind of been holding back because I felt, I feel insecure about it. Honestly, I feel like, damn, they're going to think I'm a loser <laughs> because here I am trying to tell you guys to stay positive and everything's going to be all right. And I'm like living, you know, in a situation that's not ideal and on disability and my life is not together. My life is pretty crappy right now. But the one thing I can say about that, I have not lost all hope. So keep that in mind. Things can always be worse. Things have been worse for me. I do feel better physically. Like I feel, it, I felt far worse before. So, I mean, I, I have faith that, I mean, I really do feel like God has healed things in my life that even a, a federal judge thought I would never be able to be okay. And I do feel like I have made improvements and I don't feel like it's all me that made them. I do feel like God has healed me from a lot of things and I believe that. So keep the faith. I'm just trying to stay encouraged during a time when I really don't have anyone in my inner circle or family unit that's encouraging me. But you guys encourage me and for that I am so grateful because uh, most of my, like, most of my strength has honestly come from complete strangers. Like, you guys have been more kind to me than people in my real life. And I used to think that's weird or that sounds weird, but I don't now. Because that's helped me a lot. Like, you guys have helped me get through some times when nobody else did or would or cared or nobody else even saw or noticed I was suffering. So I just want to thank you guys for that. And then as far as being a people pleaser, what I was trying to say is I was like that since childhood, just trying to make sure everything was okay and was as perfect as possible. So my dad wouldn't snap and react on my brother and I or to make my mom happy because she was depressed and sick and I think that that was not a healthy thing for me to continue on because I brought that into my adult life and it really it's my own fault you know I, I developed that whatever that is, a behavioral thing or mental thing. And now trying to make everything perfect for everyone has made me feel like very diminished and worthless if everyone around me is not completely thrilled and happy with life. I feel like it's all my responsibility how other people feel. And that's crap. Like, how can I, how can I really be responsible for how everyone feels when I can't even make sure that I'm happy? I need to make sure that I'm happy or do my best to make sure. I'm not saying that I can control all of it. We can't control everything, right? But I need to do more to make sure that I'm okay first. So I am acknowledging that now. And I need to realize that I can't please everyone. I have to be better at, I'm not going to say the word, but you know, the people that are like, I'm just going to tell people F it or F off if they don't like it. 
I don't, I'm not going to actually say that. I mean, who, am I? who knows, but I'm not going to try to. I just need to get better at not caring so much what people think. And not everything is in my control. If I can't make things perfect, if I can't make everyone around me happy and please everyone and I don't know, be that that person they expect to fix everything, then so be it. I am only human. And I cannot sacrifice my own mental health, health, happiness, and life to breathe that into other people while I'm suffocating. Yeah. Because I do feel like I am suffocating. And not my children, but I mean, if there's a lot of times recently where if I could just run away, I would run away and just get away from everything. But I can't, and I wouldn't do that to my kids. But I'm really grateful I have this outlet with you guys, and I just want you guys to feel okay to talk about your own your own things you're going through too not that you have to do it on YouTube or social media it's up to you but it's not something we should be ashamed of you know we all have our issues and our hang-ups I have plenty of them <laughs> as you can see and that's not even all of them but hey I'm human I'm sharing that with you guys because I want you to know I'm not always happy I'm not always okay Matter of fact, I struggle with those things more than you probably know. And that's just that. But I'm going to be okay. Like, I might not ever be super happy, go lucky, like no worries. But I know that I will never stop fighting and trying to get to a point of peace. I used to think I'm not going to fight anymore. I give up. Can't do it. And I had, you know, in the past tried to harm myself much when I was much younger. I wouldn't do that now. Um, but yeah, of course, the mind goes there when you're feeling desperate. And that's when you need to reach out and speak to someone, talk to someone, a friend, family, stranger, the 1-800 number, whatever. I'm not there. That's not what I'm saying. But I do feel very overwhelmed. It does not feel like Christmas does not feel like happy times and you know what I need to just be okay with that I can't make it I can't make it feel like that by myself I can just make the best out of what I have and that's good enough so I hope I didn't bum you guys out completely I really do love and care about all of you, and I appreciate you guys spending time with me, making comments, you know, liking, sharing, subscribing, all that. But mainly, I appreciate you guys spending time with me and um, just letting me know you're there. I want you guys to know that I'm here too. Even if I'm a wreck, I'm here too. I, I appreciate connecting with you guys, and it does make me feel better as a person to encourage others even if I have difficulty encouraging myself. So you guys can always um, contact me, obviously, on Instagram at Convicted Hearts Jen Magania and message me. But I think I'm going to attempt to go into this mall. <laughs> Wish me luck because it's not looking so um, inviting to me right now and my anxiety is very high. But I can do it. I'm going to do my best to do it. And you know what? My best is good enough. So until next time, I'm going to tap in with you guys soon. Love and blessings to all of my convicted hearts. You guys stay encouraged. You are good enough. Don't let anybody tell you different.